जय हिंद स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल स्टूडेंट्स ड्रीमिंग इज नॉट समथिंग दैट यू सी वाइल स्लीपिंग आई रिपीट स्टूडेंट्स ड्रीमिंग इज नॉट समथिंग दैट यू सी वाइल स्लीपिंग ड्रीमिंग एक्चुअली इज और ड्रीम्स एक्चुअली आर समथिंग दैट डज नॉट let you sleep so students what i mean to say is that add wings to your imagination never ever hesitate to fly by dream big but at the same time avoid day dreaming what i mean is dreams should be followed by appropriate actions whatever you dream in order to realize it hard work is the key so with dedication with commitment with devotion with consistency in your effort those dreams can eventually come to right students so students with that let's begin this session in this particular lecture we are going to discuss a very important and interesting topic of thrust and pressure right so we will first discuss about thrust and then i will introduce the term pressure and before we begin students i would like you to watch the video till the very end because i have included two short clippings in the form of animation in my video so as to make the teaching learning process that much more interesting and enthralling right so let's start this session then students so let's discuss thrust and again before going to the definition directly we must try to first understand the concept isn't it let us consider this to be a body students this is a body and it is kept on a surface this is a solid body it is a solid body a and it is kept on a table top or any other surface b obviously students body a will exert a force equal to its weight on body b right and this is known as the weight this force is known as the weight which we are aware of it is equal to m into g so what i stated is a body when plays on any surface it exerts a force on the surface with which it is in contact right and this force is exerted by body a on body b normally normally means perpendicularly normally it means that in the perpendicular direction that is perpendicularly similarly students let's consider another case it is the case of a solid body now let's consider the case of a fluid let us consider the case of a fluid liquids as well as gases they can be termed as fluids substances which can flow they are known as fluids let's consider a simple example suppose this is a vessel in which liquid is stored in it. any liquid and let us consider this is a small bore over here right it is an orifice o r i f i c e orifice or hole below the free surface of the liquid now obviously water will start or the liquid will start coming from it is it again i repeat students if there is a container containing some liquid and the container has got some holes then the liquid will obviously tend to come out of that container right now if you want to block the hole with the help of our finger so if you insert the finger over here so as to block the hole so as to prevent the liquid from coming out of that hole then what we will observe is a force which is being exerted by the fluid on our finger in the outward direction so that force students 
that force which the liquid exerts in the perpendicular direction that is known as thrust clear students so if you want to represent diagrammatically then if this is a fluid then it exerts the fluid exerts force on the surface with which it is in contact always in the perpendicular direction that is it exerts a force normally on the surface with which it is in contact with so it will exert a force at the bottom of the container like this making an angle of 90 degree to the surface this is all are 90 degree and on the surface of the container it will again exert force again it is 90 degree so students whether we are talking about solids or fluids in both cases the body exerts some force on the surface which it supports or with which it is in contact with normally that is in the perpendicular direction this force exerted by a body on a surface in the perpendicular direction is known as thrust clear students so thrust is a force acting on a surface normally right so it is a force so i'll write down the definition it is defined as the force on a surface acting normally acting normally normally means perpendicular clear students so this is known as thrust so thrust is nothing but it is a force exerted by a body on a surface always in the perpendicular direction and perpendicular direction perpendicularly means normally so the force exerted by a body on a surface normally or in a perpendicular direction that is known as thrust clear students so since it is a force therefore the si unit of thrust must be same as that of force that is newton we are aware the si unit of force is newton thrust being a force its si unit would be also newton represented by capital letter n right now students the impact of this force or the effect of this force is different on different surfaces what i mean to say is that the effect of the force of equal magnitude is found to be different on different areas let us try to understand this statement what i have stated is the effect of this force of same magnitude is found to be different on different areas so let me elaborate with the help of various examples right so let me write the statement first what i have stated is the effect of force that is <clears throat> okay the effect of force this is a very very important statement the effect of force of same magnitude the effect of force of equal magnitude for different areas for different areas is different let me elaborate this particular statement again i repeat students just now we have discussed about the force exerted by a body whether it is a solid liquid or gas right we have just now discussed the force exerted by a body 
perpendicular to the surface with which it is in contact with. That is known as thrust. The effect of this force of equal magnitude is found to be different on different areas. Now, let us consider example 1. Now, students, imagine yourself. You are standing on a loose ground. Loose ground means sand, right? So, this is a loose ground. And here you are standing. This is a body. And here you are standing like this. This is a body. So this is the area of contact. This is the area of contact. Here, this is the body, suppose. Now what happens is, suppose imagine this to be a person, right? And he is standing on a loose mud. Then what will happen to it? Our feet will sink into the loose mud, isn't it? And our feet will sink to quite an extent. It will sink deeper into the loose mud. Right? Now consider the other case. This is case one. Consider the other case. This is loose mud. And the person now, what happens is, earlier he was standing on the loose mud. Now he sleeps on the sand like this. Now he is in this particular position. Now what happens to it? In this case, obviously, the loose mud will sink, but to a much, much lesser extent as compared to case 1. Have I made up my point, students? What I have stated is, let us imagine a person to be standing on a loose mud. Then what happens is, the force, in this case, which is equal to its weight, will act on smaller area. So the impact of force being larger, the person will tend to sink into the loose mud to a large extent. But when he is in this particular position, then due to the increase in the area of contact, the same force which now also would be equal to the weight as was in case 1, but now the effect of this weight or the effect of this force is reduced to the lesser extent because of the increase in the area. So now the loose mud will sink but to a very very lesser extent as compared to the first case. Clear students? Similarly, similarly, okay, in this case, in both the cases, the force is the weight. But here, Suppose area A1 and this is area A2. This is the area of contact A2. Obviously here A2 is greater than A1. But impact in the first case, impact of force in case 1 is found to be greater than the impact of force in case Understood students? I am not talking about the force. In both the cases, force exerted by the body on the loose mud is same. But I am talking about the effect of force or the impact of force. Impact of force in this case is greater as compared to this case. Here the area of contact is smaller. Here the area of contact is larger. Right? You can consider other cases. Ok students, let's consider the second example, right? We are aware of school bags, right? There are some school bags having broad straps, while there are some other school, school bags having narrow straps, right? So these are the two types of bags. Suppose one is having broad straps, these are having broad straps, B R O A D, broad straps. And in the second case, suppose the same bag is having narrow strap. It is having narrow strap. Okay. Let us consider in both the cases, the same identical items are kept in the bag, in both the bags, right? So, the weight of the bag would be same. 
the force exerted by the bag on the shoulders would be same in both the cases which will be equal to the weight of the items inside the bag right now in this case students this weight get distributed over larger area so it is found that the impact of weight on one's shoulder would be quite less while on the other hand the impact of the weight on the bag in the case of narrow strap having smaller area would be severe it would definitely give pain to the shoulder of the person carrying this bag with narrow strap what i mean to say is students again consider these two examples same weight here also the same weight so same forces acting same forces being exerted by the body on the two cases right but they are acting on different areas in one case in smaller area and in the other case larger area in this case the same weight is acting over smaller area and here over larger area the impact of force on the larger area is found to be smaller as compared to the impact of force acting on the smaller area clear so what you conclude from these two examples larger the area larger this is a very very important conclusion students larger the area of contact larger the area of contact smaller is the impact of force right while on the other hand vice versa that is smaller the area of contact smaller the area of contact larger is the impact of force larger is the impact of force so students in such situations it is not preferable to measure the total force actually in such cases it would be preferable preferable to measure force acting per unit area and from there the concept of pressure is introduced in all these cases the force is not important but the force acting on unit area force acting per unit area that gives the measure of the impact of the force and in order to measure the impact of the force this term pressure is introduced so now i hope you have understood the concept right so pressure definition how you define pressure then pressure is the thrust acting per unit area and thrust you are aware students it is the force exerted by a body on a surface normally that is in the perpendicular direction so how to define pressure then so pressure is thrust per unit area it is thrust per unit area clear students again i repeat pressure may be defined as the thrust per unit area or it may be defined as the force exerted by a body on a surface normally per unit area force exerted by a body on a surface normally is known as thrust and thrust per unit area is known as pressure right so pressure is thrust acting per unit area clear students so this is the concept of pressure now before we proceed further i would like you to watch this short clipping which would certainly make the concepts that much more clear right i'll explain with the help of some other examples as well 
So do watch this short animation, right? The pressure depends upon the magnitude of the force and the area. For a given force, the pressure of a body can be reduced by increasing the area. This principle is widely used in our daily life. For example, the foundation of a building is made wider to reduce the pressure of the building. Similarly, the walls of the dams are made wider at the base so that it can withstand the pressure of water. Buses and trucks have broad and double wheels so that the pressure on the tire is reduced and they do not burst as well as they exert less pressure on the ground. Similarly, the rails on the railway track are fixed to large wide wooden sleepers. The heavy thrust of the train on the rail is spread over the large surface area of the sleepers and thus the pressure is greatly reduced on the ground and as a result it prevents the rails from sinking into the earth under heavy pressure. All cutting and piercing tools like knives, scissors, needles, saw axes have sharp edges so that they exert great pressure with minimum force. Okay students, I hope you have understood the various examples which were given in this short clipping, right? Now again, let me repeat it. What we have discussed is thrust. Thrust is the force exerted by a body on a surface normally. Normally means in a perpendicular direction. And this force exerted by a body normally per unit area is known as pressure. So, pressure we have discussed is equal to thrust which is the force acting normally on a surface per unit area. This is the mathematical expression for pressure. Right? Now regarding its SI units, friends, there are various units but first discuss the SI unit. SI stands for Standard International, right? It is actually a French term. The abbreviation SI stands for System International, System International D units, right? So SI unit of pressure is okay. Thrust, as we are aware, it is force. So its SI unit is Newton. Area, its SI unit is meter square. So therefore, SI unit is Newton per meter square. And students, Newton per meter square is also known as Pascal. Pascal is the unit which is uh, we use and it is after the name of great scientist Blaise Pascal. So remember, SI unit of pressure is also known as Pascal. So, 1 Pascal, it will be represented like this, P in capital letter, A in small letter. It is equal to 1 Newton per meter square. Clear students? So, when the pressure is said to be 1 Pascal, when a force of 1 Newton acts on a surface, normally and that surface should have an area of 1 meter square then the pressure exerted may be said to be 1 pascal so suppose this is a surface and here a force of 1 newton acts in the perpendicular direction right and the area of the surface the area of the surface is 1 meter square then the impact of this force, that is the pressure, it will be equal to 1 Pascal or 1 Newton per meter square. So when a force of 1 Newton acts on a surface normally having unit area, then the pressure exerted on the surface is said to be 1 Pascal. Clear students? There are some other units of, pas uh, there are some other units of pressure as well. 
like bar other units let's discuss other units bar it is another unit one bar it is equal to 10 raised to power 5 pascal or 10 raised to power 5 newton per meter square one pascal is one newton per meter square so bar is another unit for measuring pressure right then there is atmospheric pressure atmospheric pressure and it is represented as atm it is not auto teller machine right atm here it stands for atmospheric pressure and atmospheric pressure at sea level is measured to be 1.013 into 10 raised to power 5 pascal so students it can be written as 1.013 10 raised to power 5 pascal is bar so it can be written as 1.013 bar so this is the atmospheric pressure at sea level right so these are the various units for measuring pressure now let me give you a simple elaboration of the concept that the impact of force the impact of force of same magnitude but on different areas is different let me explain again this very important statement mathematically so what i do is students suppose this is a block This is a block maybe of dimensions suppose its dimensions is 5 centimeter this is suppose 10 centimeter and let us consider it to be 20 centimeter this length breadth and height this is a cubical block right and its mass is suppose 10 kg right now in the first case, in the first scenario, it's placed like this, with this area in contact. Now, what is the pressure exerted by this body on the surface in contact, right? So, what will be the force? Force would be equal to weight and it is equal to mg. We are aware of it. Mass is 10. The value of g, which is acceleration due to gravity, can be considered to be 10 instead of 9.8. Just to simplify the calculations, let's consider it to be 10. So it will be equal to 100 Newton, right? This is the force. And what about the area? Which area is to be considered? The area of the body which is in contact, right? And here the weight will be acting like this. This is the weight. And this is the area of contact which is placed on the supporting surface, right? So what will be the area? 10 centimeter into 5 centimeter. This is the area. So it will be 50 centimeter square. So it will be 50. Don't forget to convert it in meters. 1 centimeter square is, or 1 centimeter is tends to minus 2 meter. So we can write it like this. So it will be 50 into 10 is to power minus 4 meters square. Clear students? So what about the pressure in this case? Pressure is force per unit area. So it will be equal to 100 divided by 50 into 10 to the minus 4. So what we get is 2 into 10 raised to the power 4 Pascal. So this is case 1. Let us consider this to be case 1. Right? Now what to do is, we will consider the same body, but now it is placed on the supporting surface in a different manner. Suppose its orientation is changed. Let us consider its orientation to be changed. So now let us calculate the impact of the force which is the weight in this case as well. So in the second case what we consider is, let us consider the same cubical block to be placed in this particular manner. Now in this case, this area is in contact with the supporting surface, right? Its dimension is 10, actually it is 20 and this is 5. 
this is 5 centimeter. Weight of the same block, it will remain constant, isn't it? Weight will remain constant. So, here pressure will be, suppose it is P dash, it will be again formula is F by A, F by A. Force which is equivalent to weight, it will remain same in both the cases, right? So, what is F? which is weight, which is 100 Newton. What is area? 20 into 5 centimeter. So area is 20 into 5 centimeter square. So it will be 100 centimeter square. Isn't it stress? So 100 centimeter square. So 100 into 1 centimeter square is 10 to the power minus 4 meter square. 10 to the power minus 4 meter square. So what we get is 100 and get cancelled. So we will get 10 to the power 4 Newton per meter square. This is P dash. Now students observe these two. What do you get? P is greater than P dash. So from A and B we observe that P is greater than P dash. Clear students? So what we conclude, what we have mathematically verified is that in both the cases, the force which is equivalent to the weight of the body in both the cases is same. But due to the different orientation, the area of contact would be different. The greater the area of contact, the smaller will be the impact of force. The smaller will be the pressure. The smaller the area of contact, the more will be the impact of force, the more will be the pressure exerted by the body on the surface. So pressure is inversely proportional to the area. So for force to be constant, pressure is inversely proportional to the area. If area is more, then pressure will decrease. And if area decreases, then the impact of force, that is the pressure, will increase. It's a simple concept. Again, students, I would like you to watch another very short and interesting animation based on the advantages of low pressure and the advantages of high pressure. Right? This will be again quite interesting for you. Right? We can use drill machine to drill hole into the wall. It has a pointed tip to increase the pressure. You can easily cut vegetables with the cutting edge of the knife. But if you use blunt edge, it will be difficult to penetrate it in. What is the reason? Well, the cutting edge has small triangle like shapes which are sharp outer points. But the blunt edge has nothing of these. So if you cut vegetables with the cutting edge, the area of contact between the vegetable and knife is greatly reduced and hence more pressure is exerted. This tool used to cut the trees or wood also have sharp cutting edges instead of placid ones. It increases the pressure and impact of force. The examples that we have discussed so far are applications of high pressure. But there are some situations or applications where we require low pressure. Let us now see some advantages of low pressure. We use snowshoes to walk on snow. Due to large area of contact of snowshoes with the snow, it reduces the pressure and we are able to walk on it without our feet sinking inside. While in the case of normal shoes, due to this small area in contact, more pressure is exerted and it sinks, making it difficult to walk. It must be remembered in both the cases, the force applied is equivalent to our weight. Have you ever wondered why the wheels of this army tank run on the steel track? rather than on the ground. It is because steel tracks 
have large area of contact with the ground as a result of this large area of contact the weight of the tank which is used get distributed over larger area and thus lesser pressure is exerted on the ground okay students so before we end this session there's another very interesting fact which i would like to discuss in this particular session right this is regarding atmospheric pressure and the force exerted on our body due to that atmospheric pressure right now atmospheric pressure it is the pressure exerted by the earth's atmosphere now earth's atmosphere it must be having some weight isn't it so whatever force it is exerting per unit area in a direction perpendicular that is known as atmospheric pressure and students we are aware one atm that is atmospheric pressure it is equal to 1.013 into 10 to the power 5 pascal please do remember it it's an additional knowledge but you should be aware of it right this is atmospheric pressure this is atmospheric pressure now a normal adult the surface area of a normal body of a human being is about 1.5 meters square it is the area or rather it is the surface area of a human body it is about 1.5 meters square so due to the atmospheric pressure what is the force which is being exerted on the human body by the gas surrounding us so we know that pressure is force per unit area this is the formula isn't it so force would be equal to pressure multiplied by area so the force acting on our body due to the atmospheric pressure would be what is the atmospheric pressure it is 1.013 into 10 to the power 5 it is in pascal that is newton per meter square multiplied by what is the surface area of a normal average adult human body that is about 1.5 meter square 1.5 meter square so it would be 1.013 multiplied by 1.5 into 10 to the power 5 per meter square meter square get cancel so we'll obtain the force in newton so it is equal to you can calculate it 1.5 multiplied by 1.0 it is something a little bit greater than 1 so it will be actually something about 1.52 into 10 to the power 5 newton students this is a huge force 10 to the power 5 it's a huge force which is acting on our body due to the earth's atmosphere surrounding us it's a huge impact but how we are able to sustain it that's the question how we are able to sustain this huge force which are being exerted on us by the earth's atmosphere the reason is students our body it contains several pores there are numerous pores holes through which the air from outside can get inside there is a communication between the outer and the inner environment so a balance is maintained the internal pressure which the fluid inside our body exert in the outward direction is exactly balanced by the atmospheric pressure which acts in the inward direction so there is a delicate balance between these two between the internal pressure and the external pressure and that is because of the pores in our body through which the air can communicate from inside and outside so there is a balance between the internal pressure due to the blood running through the veins they also exert pressure in the outward direction so that balances the external atmospheric pressure so that is how the shape of the body is maintained or else we would have squeezed down isn't it so anyways whenever this delicate balance is disturbed like when we go higher altitude when we move to some place which is at located at very very high altitude then 
the atmospheric pressure decreases, internal pressure increases, so the balance is not there, isn't it? Imbalance, a sort of imbalance is created. So that is where the problem arises. Sometimes the bleeding uh, starts from the nose, isn't it? That's due to the imbalance between the internal and the external pressure. The same happens when we go deep inside a sea. Again, there the external pressure increases and the internal pressure is uh, not that of the same order. So again, due to the imbalance, some problems are faced. So we need to take accordingly measures. We need to take some precautionary measure so as to maintain that balance. Right? So this was the question just for a general awareness. So students, in this lecture, what we have discussed is basically thrust any force exerted by a body on a surface normally that is in a perpendicular direction that is known as thrust it is a force SI unit is Newton and the impact of this thrust on different areas is different smaller the area the impact of thrust is more larger the area the impact of thrust is lesser so there comes the introduction of this topic of pressure. Pressure is thrust per unit area. So more the area for a given thrust, lesser will be the pressure. Lesser the area of contact for the same thrust, more will be the impact, more will be the pressure. And then we have discussed the SI unit of pressure which is Pascal, named after famous scientist Blaise Pascal. And it is also Newton per meter square. Right students? And thereafter we have discussed various examples. So I hope you have understood this topic and uh, you must have enjoyed this session. So do join me in my next lecture. Always stay blessed and always be happy. Thank you.